Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It is time for the Written Undead podcast. So far, I haven't frozen. Didn't even make it two seconds into the last week's episode. But we are here again, and it is a wonderful day. We've got the man that I started off as a fan of, later became friends with, and who now acts as my mentor. Hanging out with me, Angel Ramon, Dungeon Dan Ubell, my hero, the one and only Jeff Thompson. What is going on, big brother? Yo. What's up, man? <laughs> yep, we're all good. We're all hanging out, getting this thing going. Now, Jeff, as the, the main fans know, right now you're working on the Epic Mayhem series. But before we get into that, which is so good, by the way, one sitting right there. Mm -hmm. Let's see where it all started from. When, where was the first, what was the first book you actually published? You're never ready for a zombie apocalypse. Love Which it. Which is a it's a very true statement, by the way. That's very, very true. true. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's how I met Jeff. By the way, I met I met him the same way, bringing that book. Surprise guest there... incoming. Uh oh. It's Doc. Hey Doc. Hey. Hello Doc. Hey Doc. Good to see hey. you. Good to see you. Can you actually hear me this time? Yes, I yes, can. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, we had now just asked. Party. We had just asked Jeff, you know, tell us about the first book he had ever had published, and we were getting going strong there. And I'm pretty sure you're quite familiar with the first book he ever had published. Uh, which one is your first one, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> you're never ready for a zombie apocalypse. Oh yeah, of course I have. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, uh, is was, this? Um... I, came, I came up with the title first. <laughs> And it just it sounded so good. I'm like, all right, I write a book. <laughs> now, were you at, uh, still on the road truck driving Ooh. when you first started writing? Oh, so now yeah. how much how much did you actually write on the road as opposed to at home? Most of it, the vast majority of it. And, and I, I I did it. This is this is not bullshit. I swear, I wrote most of that book with my laptop sitting on top of my steering wheel. Doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> hey, you do what you got to do, man. That's what you went to school for, right? Learn how to drive a truck while not driving? Well, yes, I wasn't actually going down the highway at the time. Oh, slacker. Oh. See, that, mm -hmm. would be a, that, that would be a D. Cooper move right there. She'd be riding down, <laughs> driving her bus, yep. her keyboard yeah. over here, and she's no steady way. typing away. Yelling at everybody ready. honking. Hey, get off the road. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, an 80,000 pound battering ram isn't the kind of thing you want to mess with. So, no, a, of course yeah. not. Got you a question here. I, I'm assuming this is probably Lee Edwards. Uh, Angel, could you check that for me? Um, uh, it says, on, on the road, how did he write it? On laptop? I guess, well, obviously, or did you use any audio to do any of it? No, no, I didn't. I need to see the words. I tried using the audio thing. It just doesn't. Hey, Sean. Yeah. It's... Hey, Sean. It's How it's you Johnny. doing, buddy? Hello, How many Johnny. People wrote their first book in a truck. I mean, I'm up to three now. How many more do you think? I know, I know J.S. Patrick for sure. Uh, we got yeah. Jeff. Uh, D. I know some plenty of writing on the road. David Simpson doing it on uh, the Jack, road. By the Yo, way, that's that's Douglas. That's Douglas K. Pfizer oh. who asked that question. Oh, Our Dougie. friend from Scotland. Well, well, hello, Dougie. That's one. That's one of the great, one of the only few great advantages of driving for a living. You spend a lot of time doing this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so your mind can wander, and my mind, since I'm a writer. Wanders, wanders in story form. Now, have you ever been driving like at night and you're running some really freaky story through your head and actually spooked yourself? Well, no. <laughs> I, made myself, I, I made myself crack up. <laughs> that I could see, absolutely. Because you have gotten me to crack up on more than one occasion. <laughs> well, you know... There's no way around this. Mm -hmm. 
I am in the entertainment business. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I need to be <laughs> entertaining. You're if, it in, doesn't, you do. if, it doesn't, if it doesn't entertain me, it's not going to entertain anybody else. You're probably right about that. Absolutely. Yep. So, now, um, how much would you say during your truck di- driving days, percentile-wise, you spent either writing, thinking about writing, or thinking about editing versus just simply driving the truck? Oh, at least half the time. At least half the time. And so my how many? Duty, I, it's long days. So... So um, how many characters of yours throughout all your entire library of wonderful stuff, um, how many of those characters were inspired by people you saw while you were out in the awful public? The awful public? <laughs> you got to get in better neighborhoods, man. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are a lot of them who are based on people I know, uh, particularly the, the zombie series. Because it's set in the Coast Guard, and I was in the Coast Guard. A lot of the characters are based on people I served with. And then, of course, Epic Mayhem. I've got a couple of knuckleheads in this room. (laughs) (laughs) Who got killed off. And still they're around. I don't know how. Because you haven't killed this. Oh, no, you have. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's killed some of you multiple times. One in particular. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me, he killed me once, brought me back, and now I won't go away. See? Uh, that's true. Angel keeps getting killed. I'm just out because of my weirdness, I suppose. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> yeah. that went out really good. Two whole chapters worth just to kill me. Yeah, it, it was not in paint form, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed quite a bit. Yeah. I had to you know, you know, I got to say, I mean, that's the, the one thing that got me hooked on Jeff Thompson's books right off the rip was his deliberate and masterful use of sarcasm. Yeah. The, his stories yeah. drip it. And it's funny. You know, you can get sarcasm where you're like, God, this guy's a dick. But Jeff, it's always got a nice humorous edge to it. Um, uh, I just like it. Uh, the fact that he can write his people to where you really believe, you know, the characters are real even though they're based mm-hmm. on somebody real. And that's why I fell in love with the zombie series. And uh, that's how I first met Jeff as well. Now, with the uh, Guardians of the Apocalypse series, that does bring up a question that I'm sure I've asked you in the past, but there's going to be new eyes, new ears on all this, so I'll ask it again. How early in the writing process did you decide, i got to have coordinates at the beginnings of things so people can actually go look and see exactly where this event's happening? Actually, that wasn't until the second book. I wrote the first one, and one of the people I had paid to read it was a guy I served with, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who, who was the real Lane Keeley. Okay, um, cool. And, and he okay. said, you might want to delineate where each chapter is. <clears throat> Because there are a lot of different storylines that run through it. The uh, yeah. <laughs> the last one, Full Metal Zombie, had a dozen storylines in it. Did it? Yeah, had a dozen different storylines in it. Wow. And, uh, how do you keep up with something like that? Yeah, you took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. Coffee. Great, great minds. Coffee. coffee. Lots and lots of coffee. I was going to say weed. Yeah, I was going to say whiskey. And, and me. <laughs> and I was going to say whiskey. Uh, and Doc. Definitely cannot yeah. do about Doc. And Doc. Yeah. Do you guys like checking every road and every street to make sure they actually exist? Well, that's, you have I, to do that. I, I do the same thing. Huh. Doc, yeah, Doc, Doc has saved me a bunch of times. A bunch of times. That's what those but, editors are for. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, Jack. With the red pen, the evil red pen. <laughs> Not so <laughs> much that as, as just making sure things. Yeah, no, no, yeah, of course. Makes sense because, I mean, I don't know the, I don't remember, Jeff, when you said the last time you were in Hawaii was, but 
a lot of things have changed. So we'll start bringing in stuff from when he was there last. And it's like, nope, defunct. Nope, nope. It doesn't <laughs> <there>. flow. <laughs> you know, and then we'll have to readjust. He'll have to go back and rewrite parts of it so that mm -hmm. he's brought things back into service or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. I, sit there, I will sit there with the Google Maps satellite view up, whatever mm -hmm. I'm writing. And I will frequently go to the map and go, okay, this is, okay, there's that. Yeah. That's how I keep it straight. That's an attention to detail that I can guarantee you most authors mm -hmm. probably do not do. You know, they go off basic memory, might yep. Google something <laughs> real quick, and yep. mm -hmm. that's it, and they're moving on. So that's impressive. That is seriously impressive of uh, putting in the extra work. Well, it's... It's for my, my own sanity. I mean, how many times have you guys read something right. that, you, that you know something about for real life? Mm -hmm. And they get the details wrong. Yes. Right. You get that confused or you get lost. Nuts. Yeah. I, <clears throat> yep. Or, 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 or they write in a certain time period and they get the, the woods one. They, 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 you know, they, they use the wood. You know, you know what I'm saying, Jack. Uh, they use, yeah, they're like they wrong get, descriptions, yeah. like armor from this era they're using in this era, even though it wasn't around exactly. in this era. Yes. Or, 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 or just the dialogue. The dialogue itself, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a match with the times. Like, it, like you want to say, yo, bro, in a, in a, in a gangster, you know, 1920 set novel. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, that's where, mm -hmm. um, particularly in the military, Right. Uh -huh. uh, because uh, you, even though we all, all the veterans out there weren't in the same branch of service, there are certain things about being in the military uh -huh. that are universal. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, which is where the sarcasm comes from. <coughs> uh -huh. Right. The the I did do I did write something I think it was in the just second or third book uh -huh. about the three different speech patterns. Remember that of people, mm -hmm. of people in the military, mm -hmm. it's uh, jargon, sarcasm, and insult. Mm -hmm. Everybody I've known in the military uses jargon, uses sarcasm, and it insults people left and right. That's just the way it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's life. Well, Basically, if you're if they're not making fun of you, they don't like you. Yeah. Well, exactly. yeah, there's there's so many things about being in the military that are just nuts. But yep, you have no you. choice. You have no choice to <clears throat> deal with it. Because you're in the military, you swore that oath, you're stuck now, buddy. Yep. You're stuck <laughs> for at least the four years. Yeah, you have to deal with it. The only way to really keep your sanity is to just joke around, make it funny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you know, when when go fuck yourself is a term of endearment. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff has told me know. that. Je Jeff has told me and Dan that recently, as a matter of fact. <laughs> daily. <laughs> yeah, almost daily. Jen's and, fault. And it's always richly deserved. Yeah, here's and, another military thing. And you guys think back when you read that first book. Actually, in the first two books, Jeff didn't get away from this until like the third. But every time a character showed up with orders, dude, that's exactly how the orders are. They're like 19 fucking pages of stuff. You fall asleep before you ever get to the meat and potatoes of what this, the whole thing is about. <laughs> wow. And so I'm, I'm reading this book and I'm just like, wait. And it's just page after page. I'm like, that fucker. <laughs> I didn't like reading this when I served. I don't he like really, 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 really want all that. It's, but it's detail. It's uh, little yeah, details I mean, that yeah, make I'm things. Sorry, got against it. Yeah. Did you so just now, change the background. Or yeah. Did you uh, teleport. <laughs> I teleported. You know, it makes you teleported. Me um, can you teach me that's how to a, do that? That's yeah. a question. <laughs> so now, Doc, since uh, you were, the, you know, had to help edit a lot of this stuff how did you feel the, like the first time or two when jeff was getting into all that detail were you just like does he really need all of this or were you automatically like no this makes sense um some of the things 
didn't make sense. And I pointed it out and the rest did. And I was just into the story. So it was like, yep, I'll let him, let him drift on wherever he wants to go. As long as everything lines up and the roads he's taking and things like that. Cause I think the first one I did for you was one of the guardians or was it cheerleaders? Oh my God. I love that book. I do too. We're going to talk about it as soon as we get done with guardians. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been, might have been cheerleaders. It might have been cheerleaders. That'd be a hell of a weird place to start. Yeah, no, it made perfect well. sense to me. But um, yeah, I had a well, heap, heap of fun doing it, and then you just sort of just start start going with it. Um, it's the same thing. I mean, you can you can ask Scott Baker as well. There's points during which in his books that that didn't work dude this is what would have happened you know nurse Alyssa wouldn't have done this then she's a nurse come on um (laughs) you know let's let's think about it Um, well those those basic details matter yeah and and, 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 and that's what's important yeah when you're writing fiction Mm -hmm. it all hinges on the reader suspension of disbelief. It's much easier to get them to do that if the foundation the story is built on makes sense and rings true. Right. Mm-hmm. If, it, if you build from that, they're much more willing to go with you when you start making shit up. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because they've, they've got a grounding point. Yep. Now, I have recently read a book that was military based and none of the jargon, none of the interaction worked, even the way they would form up to go out and handle the zombies. It just it distracted me so badly because I'm just like, dude, you obviously have not served and that's OK, but don't you know, don't just try to wing this yourself. You're coming across like a bad USA movie. Mm. Uh, get get <laughs> somebody who served and say, hey, go over this dialogue. You know, uh, and it really, it really distracted me from the story. And I, and I had already decided I'm not going to finish the rest of the series. I can't, I just can't do it. That's a shame. It is a shame. Somebody it just didn't do their homework. Simple and, as yeah, that. and it's nothing against them. For all I know, this was the very first book he ever put out. He's probably gotten better, but I, I'm just not ready to dive into that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is true. So, well, now, so I, I'll tell you, man, in some people's cases, uh, Jeff being a prime example of this, their first book tells that, yeah, this person's got it, like right off the rip. It's like, they're good. Just let them write. They don't well, need it. Yeah, but that wasn't my first book. It was my fifth. Ah. The, first, the first four never saw the light of day, and justifiably so. Mm. Wait, uh, are Jeff- we still talking about the Guardians? No. No. Oh, we've moved I, on. Uh, Jack? Jeff, I, I got a question. You haven't read. No hey, Jeff. Read. Yeah. I, I got a question. How, how many manuscripts or how many stories do you have out there that never really got published? Four of them. Four? Oh, okay. Four of them. The first four I wrote. I've been doing hmm. this. I've been doing this since I was like seven years old. I'm 61 now. So Really? Yeah. Oh, finally, somebody it's... older than me. Not by much, yeah. though. <laughs> I turned 62 this year. I turned 60 this year. All right, you're getting closer, Jeff. You're getting closer to, the, to that senior age. I'm pretty sure Doc's finally going to be legally drinking now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got to that 21. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> good call there, Dan. Thank good call. you so much, Dan. Yeah, good call. <laughs> Nothing brown, right? They beat all of you, but we'll just leave it like that. <laughs> Australia, it's like 18 for the drinking age, isn't it? No. I, 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 I figure Australia I can tell would be it's like... As soon as you can reach a bar. That's what I was yeah, going to say. Yeah. Yeah. I know where I am is 18. Where I am is 18. Well, yeah. yeah the, the... But Angel, you're a kid. Yeah, <laughs> not, not a sack me. I may move like a kid, but not a sack me. <laughs> when when I visited Puerto Rico, yeah, the favorite place I went was the Bacardi yep. factory. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. five bucks. Five bucks was all it cost, and you could sample every single kind of rum. Yes. Made yep. Yeah, not anymore. Back then, yeah, That's not, not anymore. I'm thinking about 
I think they, you got it with something tripping on that. Oh, they make a lot of different kinds of rum too, boy. Oh, I know, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. They got they got different flavors of rum. I, no, every time I go to I go go to Walmart, where I got Bacardi, all kinds of flavors, coconut, lemon, you name it. You got all kinds of flavors. Yeah, man. I, I'm just, I'm not a big drinker, but for New Year's or whatever special occasion, I like I get myself a bottle of Bacardi. Yeah. No, but this, this, but but actually, this, this is actually one I like better than Bacardi. Don Q, Don Q. That's hmm. me. I don't know if you ever tried that one, Jeff. I have. There's some nice Cuban rums too. Yeah. yeah the there, last there, rum there, I had a, was Haitian. There's a Cuban rum. Uh huh. They taste like they taste like oh. cognac. Oh. Mm. Oh. Oh, it's, oh, that's so good. Mm. So so good. Well, now that we got everybody wanting to get good and shit faced out there, yeah. let's uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and segue on along over here with what Dan had just said. Dan, we okay. will let you do the lead in for this. Uh, screen bloody, screen bloody cheerleaders. Jeff, have you ever been on a movie set, or did you consult with somebody? Because that's the first thing that hit me when I was listening to this novel. Is like, holy shit! This is a, this is pretty much what it's like on a low budget set. Well, I've taken some classes in film production um mm -hmm. i've I, i'm one of those weird people who listen to directors commentaries mm -hmm. that's not weird i do yeah but i know do yeah and well the reason the reason is actually pretty simple the best advice i've ever gotten about writing came from an agent mm -hmm. i met 25, 30 years ago, okay. who told me that the key is to write your story as if you're watching it in a movie. That makes sense. Well, if, I mean, you guys have seen the way I'm doing Epic Mayhem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Real short scenes that, that focus on one character and then the next one focuses on somebody different, just like you would in the movie. And the background has expensive effects going off. Exactly. And every now and then you blow shit up for no reason. And tease a lesbian sex scene repeatedly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, that's something that really happens on a set. Some, not on every set, but you know, there's a scene that everybody in the crew is like kind of waiting on now mm -hmm. uh, there came a certain point where they would build a build the room in a set and they would be closed and only certain people could get in or if you were friends with the director you could be over by the monitor um but so that was another thing i loved about scream bloody cheerleader is everybody was waiting for the big lesbian scene that just never seemed to happen yeah. just kept going even when it happened it didn't happen so now, where did that story come from? Screenplay cheerleader. Mm -hmm. I just I I it just popped into my head one day while I was at work. And I think it's, it's a long way away from what you have going with Guardians. Like it's oh, <laughs> totally no, different. No, I, yeah. I, wrote, I wrote the original version of Screenplay cheerleader back probably two thousand five. Wow. That long ago. Um, yeah, I I, I, I I scribbled down a bunch of notes while I was at work one day. I was a construction inspector, which was an mm. awesome job. Because basically what it meant was that I stood around watching other people work. Perfect. I, wow. <laughs> I, would, I would drink coffee, smoke way too many cigarettes. Every now and then I would point at something. <laughs> at the end of the day, wow! And at the end of the day, I would write a report. And they paid me yeah, that sounds a like a great lot job. Of money for it. So you know, most of the time I'm just standing around. So I got this idea, and I just started scribbling down notes about it on scrap paper. Yeah, hey, that's fine. And I went home that night and started it, and I wrote. I wrote it in screenplay format. I finished the screenplay in a week. Damn. Oh, wow. That one flowed out fast. Oh, it, it, I couldn't believe it. And I always thought it was hilarious. 
Yeah, it is. It is that. I mean, it like, is it's laugh out loud. funny. I know people but, but overuse could, the expression, but it was laugh out loud funny. Well, yeah, but I couldn't get anybody Damn, to make it into a movie. Mm. So after I started publishing on The Great and Powerful Zod, may it forever shine its light on us. <laughs> um, I decided, well, I love this story. I'm going to do something with it. So I originally published it as a screenplay, and it fell like a Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> um, nobody bought it. So I then revisited it later, turned it into a prose version, and it fell like a Led Zeppelin. <laughs> and then I gave it to Matt Crow. That can fix the, a lot of things. Who did the audio yeah. version of it. And he made what I wrote so fucking funny. It had me laughing my ass off. So, all, uh, Jeff, all props to, to, to Matt. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, did, when you were listening to the to your audio book, did you feel weird or did you have to have real feeling about listening to, your own, to what you have written being read out? Well, no, because I mean, when I when I write, I read the stuff back as if I'm talking. I I, I listen to what I'm writing to make sure that it flows. Because you can hmm. tell if you read it out loud, even just if it's outlined inside your head, uh -huh. you hear the cadence of it. You hear how it flows one paragraph into the next, and you can tell when it isn't. You can tell when you get a clunker. Ah, right, right. right and right. and and see, that's why I've been using the uh, Microsoft Word read aloud thing, so mm -hmm. I can. I mean, it's great. It's a robotic voice, but still, like you said, if something becomes disjointed all of a sudden, you'll hear it in the readback. Like, if you may not see it if you're looking at it, but it's like I'll hear it, and I'll be like, "How did I miss that?" And I go back and play with it, massage it a little bit, and then it sounds a little better. Good tool. Yeah, it, it it may look like you've written the greatest sentence in the history of literature, and then you read it out loud, and it's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Doc, your aborigine is really messing with me right now. <laughs> at, first, at, at first glance, I thought she had uh, Bigfoot behind her. <laughs> I kind of thought so too with the hair. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. yeah, not well, Bigfoot though. Australia. <laughs> hey, you don't know he might have big feet. Love uh, that country. My feet. Love that yeah, country. I loved Australia too. I've been there um, five times. Mm. Military. Well, I was in the military, but boy, I had fun. <clears throat> the place notorious for pretty much everything there can and will kill you basically yep well yeah but if you stay by the beach you, you don't really see that unless sharks you decide to go well yeah if you go, if you go <laughs> swimming at the great barrier reef with a pork chop around your neck <laughs> you're, you're probably not gonna have a good time shark will exactly. that sounds that sounds like something that um ghost jack's gonna do in like book 27 a ghost pork chop, uh huh, and a ghost shark. Yep. A ghost shark. <laughs> I gotta see how that one plays out. Well, you got about twenty more books to go before we get there. So, well, hey, the got ghost sex to go. part worked. Yeah, be careful. So it, as it was, sci-fi did a movie about it. Mm. Oh, I may have to look that up. I love them stupid sci-fi movies. Well, Don't you yeah, dare say Sharknado. I am a, I am I a mean, Sharknado once in a while fanatic. you get a, you get a gem. And once in a while. Sharknado. Sharknado, yeah. Oh, and, I'm yeah. going to have to rethink my friends. And Lava Lantula. <laughs> Lava Lantula using the Police Academy crew. Well, the ones that were available. Yeah, crew. Dungeon Dan. Yeah, my, your, your, my same words are exactly. I have to uh, recheck my friends. <laughs> Yeah, same you thing might you have said. to. Matter of fact, get your mom. I'm going to talk to her. 
Yeah, yeah, fat chance. Really? I just yeah. saw her doing laundry, man. I can just yell and she'll hear me. <laughs> there goes Jack. Do you see what I deal with every day, folks? Do you see the madness I have to put up with? I know. Jack and freaking Angel are hard to deal with. It's that, <laughs> it's, it, it, no, we're, 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 we're like two big babies. No, it's that damn Jen Amato. That's the damn troublemaker. Right. Yeah, she, yeah, she, I, I, yeah, too bad she's not here. Well, yeah, if well, she was kissing that. her buttocks. Yeah, that's why I didn't that's why I said it now, not then. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. I hope she doesn't watch this. She's gonna be get those dolls out again. Yeah, oh, she's gonna be like, uh oh. Yeah, she's got I the know, voodoo doll. Going to blame me on. So yeah, we gotta be careful about that. She's she's got powers that cannot be explained. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So now we've got the green <laughs> bloody cheerleader out of the way. And Jake said, I froze for a minute, so I missed some of whatever y'all were talking about. So I'm just kind of feeling my way back into this thing. Um, epic mayhem. Where the hell did that come from? Yeah. The You've title came to me first. Okay. Well, I mean, I've, I've, for years I've been toying with an idea of a, creating a universe mm -hmm. that was like all those great 80s action movies all the time. Because I mean, you look at those great action movies that you have the Schwarzeneggers and the Stallones and everything and they were so much fun. Right. They mm -hmm. never took themselves seriously, even the bad ones. Like Juva Ball or Huey Ball or Oh God, yeah. That asshole. <laughs> he made um, some bad movies. Horrible movies. But, but they're fun. You could yeah, you could tell he was having fun. Yeah. And that's you know, that's the point. This is the entertainment business. Be entertaining. Right, that's the idea. Yeah, you know. So, I wanted to create a universe that was just like non-stop, full out, balls out, and then I did. I just the, the the title name, Epic Mayhem, came to mind. I'm like, yes, <laughs> and it just went from there. So, so how did it? Why did you decide to put it in 1947 Chicago? Just that you yeah. really like gangsters and well, know, heyday? Yeah, I mean, the period is fascinating. Oh, because, yeah? Because you've got, you've got millions, literally millions of people who have recently discovered what true horror really is. They went through the war. Right. They they liberated the concentration camps. They saw dead bodies everywhere. Cities demolished. They saw that each and every day. Now, most of them, when they came back in the real world, they were happier than shit to leave all of that behind and rejoin their lives. Well, I thought, what would happen if those people got back from the war and they just didn't stop killing? Hmm. Naturally, I put a funny spin on that. Nothing funnier than murder, Jeff. Nothing, nothing funnier funny. than murder. <laughs> no. no I mean, nothing funny. funny than gratuitous, senseless violence. Sure. That's not the other one you tell. And Epic Mayhem is gratuitous, senseless violence. Yeah. It is. And that's what makes it so fun. And I it see is. I have one of the angels' heads in the back. Yeah. Of that's what makes it fun. Yep. And when I when I originally uh wrote the back of the book blurb for the first book. Uh, welcome to the city. I described it as think the Dresden Files 
mm-hmm. meets Sin City while right. hanging out with the Warriors in 1947. Yay. And it that hit. Really, that really is it. It's, it's now, now, <laughs> of course, now for everybody that has read at least the first book, they know there's this multiple gangs that are all in the city, all have their own ward, their own little piece of the pie. Right. And there's there's a delicate piece amongst them. What I want to know is how did you come up with the names of those damn gangs? Because they're unique. Trust <laughs> me. They're not just all suit wearing mobsters running around in old sedans. Nope. They're all unique. Well, that's the Warriors. You know, the, that, 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 that was such a great movie. The Warriors, yes, yes. And, and, and you know, the Baseball Furies. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Baseball, realistically, yeah. realistically, any gang in New York City mm-hmm. that walked around wearing baseball uniforms <laughs> would get the yep. shit kicked out of them on a daily basis. <laughs> yep. But... The way they made the Warriors was like a comic book. Mm-hmm. And it Ooh. fit. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, we have street gangs <clears throat> running the day to day operation of the city. Mm-hmm. Let's make up some names. So I just pulled a bunch of names out of my butt. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's called creativity. Yes. Hey, yeah, so as long as, as Jeff, as long as you're having fun, that's what counts. It's all about having fun. Oh, you know? I'm and I meant the creativity of the names mm-hmm. of these gangs. I'm going to drop a couple for you guys. Uh, play with them amongst yourselves. The Nosferatu, <laughs> the Nosferatu gang. Nosferatu. The, that's, the, I'm in that, that one. That was actually one of the readers came up with that. Ah, nice. I I really did a good. I, I did a contest when I first started out saying, I need these gang names. Give me a good gang name and I'll kill you in the book. <laughs> yep, I remember well, that, 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 that snowballed. And I ended up killing 20 readers in that book. Like 35 in the second book. And about 25 in the third one. Now that I'm going into a fourth book, more people need to die. <laughs> so, you need to get more names. <laughs> to those of you here in The Written Undead, uh-huh. if you would like to die pointlessly and beautifully, violently, for the entertainment of others, get with Jack. Give your name to Jack, he'll give it to me, and you will be killed. <laughs> it's a hit list. Yep, it's an open challenge. It's Pretty open. Much. It's an open invitation to your own death. I might like that. Yep. And it's you know, and it's also a good way to keep up with the number of fans you have that are active. And yeah. let's see, yeah. we've already gotten a bunch already, so that's a good sign. Yeah, it's close to a hundred. I've killed off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's well, close. Uh, now, is that counting the multiple times you've killed Angel? <laughs> Or no, is he just count no, as Angel, one? Angel is a special case. I mean, that's what become his to? hobby. Number uh, six. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's become a hobby of his. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every day when Angel's sitting around, just minding his own business, he starts getting this weird tingle at the back of his skull, and he's like, "Oh shit, Jeff's thinking about another way to kill me." <laughs> yep. Oh no. I, uh, Jeff, I was going to ask you though. Uh, Jeff, uh, do, do you have a word count that you might hit on a daily basis, or do you just wing it? Um. Well, epic may the epic mayhem books are short. <laughs> They're between okay. thirty and forty thousand words. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the reason I did that is right. to look at those movies from the eighties. How many of them were longer than ninety minutes? Right. Yeah, almost none. True. none. Not none many, no. Max. In fact, the ones that ended up being two hours or longer kind of sucked. Drug they out too, too much. Long. Yeah, they were too long. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah so, 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 sometimes, sometimes there is a thing as being too long. It's, that's mm-hmm. true, yes. Well, it depends on why too long. If it's a lot of talky talky, it's too long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it's a lot of action, 
Yeah, I throw another hour in. I'm good. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it it just I, I it, it seems right to me that they should be short. Get in, get out, done. Just it's, mm-hmm. it's like I don't know the literary equivalent of. Potato chips, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I can give you another really good reason for um, keeping a book short or shorter, short-ish, whatever, is because like I said I recently just received one that's this thick, and it's one book in a series. It's this thick, and if you're just an average reader, not like a devout, I've got to read all the time type person. You get your hands on that, and you're immediately intimidated. Like, I don't know if I've got the time. To... Because if you're reading something, and say you read the first eight or nine chapters, and then all of a sudden life gets in the way, and you can't read again for <clears throat> three weeks, well, a lot of what you read there in that first part's gone. Yeah. Because, and now you're stuck. And you, yeah. you know if you start it over again, you're still going to wind up in the same boat. You're never going to finish this. There's just yeah. no way. So you bring it down to here. And suddenly that feels right in your hands. That feels like I can get through this one. You know, I can do this. And then you fill it with great action, gratuitous violence, all of those wonderful things that we all love so much. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you got something there. You absolutely do. It, it seems to work. It all fits. So, and the beauty, the beauty of this series, uh, from my perspective, is that once. This fourth book is finished. The rules will all be laid out. And from that, I can then write pretty much anything I want. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. this, this universe is wide open. Yeah. And, and it's wild. I mean, I mean if, if I were to do a story about lesbian, alien, Sasquatch, <laughs> oh. In, in oh no! Leather, oh no! I oh boy! It was I can bad. see it coming. It's yeah. Coming. I was gonna say he, he's speaking it into existence. Yeah, yep. I'm already ready to buy it. I just, <laughs> honest, I just mentally put money aside for this one. You had me at lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. Of course. Well, speaking of gang names, how about the psycho bitches? That's a great I love one. that one. It was a good one. Yeah. And now, since you brought them up, how do their uniforms look, Jeffy? <laughs> like dominatrixes? As well it's, they should. He well just spews that out like, duh. 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 Now, you haven't, you haven't uh, given us all the gangs yet. Mm-mm. No. Yeah, but you're you have like that. eight. Oh, go ahead. You're going to get another one here shortly. Ooh, nice. Okay. New fresh meat. Yep. Got to love it. Well, yeah. think about it. He's wiped out a lot of the other gangs in book True three. Enough. True right. enough. True well, enough. Well, actually, he hasn't wiped them all out. He's just wiped out a, some of the players. That's the way mm-hmm. I look yeah, at well, it. Yeah, well, one uh, of them rephrase. is... Rephrase. One, one of them is pretty much knocked out. Um. Certain scaly there's, per- there's persuasion. There's actually only two more gangs you haven't been introduced to, mm. which is the Italian Legion and the Golden Tong. I mean, those are the only two. Guys. Those are the only two you haven't been introduced to yet. I have to be very careful when saying Golden Tong, so it doesn't come out <laughs> Golden Tong, because that's a whole different thing. A whole different story there, buddy. Don't show us, Jack. No. No. <laughs> Keep those in the drawer. Please. No, 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 no. That, that's how we were going to wrap the show. Come on. Well, maybe make Angel uh, wear them. Oh, oh. Yeah. If it's either that or me. I'm a little bothered by oh. that. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it, no. In, in chain mail? I think he should be in chain mail when he's doing it. Anyway. Ooh. Angel, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Listen, anyway. listen, guys, I've got to go to work. It was great joining you. Yep. Thank you for hey, popping did in. You guys, right. you. Yeah. Did, did you get the latest patches I sent you? Yeah, I downloaded it about an hour ago. I'll take yeah. a look. I've got to get my syllabi prepared for school. 
So because oh. classes start again. So cool. All right. work. that take Back precedence. Work, classes yeah. start Tuesday. So look for uh, it afterwards. Yeah. All righty. Well, thank Alrighty. you for popping in, Doc. It was a honor Please, to have Doc, you on thanks again. Thanks, great seeing so you. So good to see yep. you again. It was fun, dudes. Yep. Well, good to see, see you. again soon. Bye. Bye-bye. They need to figure out how to leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. You're kind there of you oh, There she goes. There she goes. So. Yeah, speaking, speaking of uh, the, the latest batch, Dan, have you read it yet? I downloaded it. You slack bastard. Look. I was busy setting stuff up and, you know, trying to get past some problems. And you know how it is. Nothing ever goes together like it's supposed to. No, oh, just to let you know, we get more Ricky Fleet. And more Ricky Fleet is always good. Absolutely. How you? I, I can't wait to see how he dies. Everybody dies. He's going to die. Right? Never never know. I mean, I, I know he was planning on keeping my ghost around as long as he did. And he's still here. Well, yeah, but you're a special case, Jack. I Head have been case. told that. I have been told that, yes. Oh, and Dan, as far as the not being able to put that, I actually moved that to the other side of that, and it still does that. It's oh, just the a, glare? Yeah, because my window is literally right there, hence the I not fight just glare of the all Damien. the time in here, too. I just hey. found it funny. It's like you're always talking about pattern room. I'm like, he sits in front of the fucking poster. What the hell? I know, but that's why. But the thing is, there is a curtain rod and a blackout curtain sitting over there that I've just been too lazy and I haven't hung up yet. So that's it. that's the reason for that. <laughs> now, you are moving forward currently, as you pointed out about the batches that me and Dan and Jen and Dee are blessed to get the chance to read long before anybody else ever gets to see the stuff. Um, how... How's that going right now? Is it just a flowing, or do you keep finding yourself having to stop and start and stop and start? Well, I always kind of start and stop. That's how, because I edit as I go. Mm -hmm. So I'm always going back, reading what I wrote, fixing it, and moving on. So, which, which, I mean, for me, it works because by the time I write the end, it's pretty much ready to. to Upload to Amazon. I noticed Not it doesn't quite, take you but... long. You know, once once we get that final bit and we give you what we think, and it's literally days. It's like, all right, it's up in that. You know, what do you call it? The Tron. The Zon. Yeah, the Zon. The Zon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Powerful. The great and powerful Zon. <laughs> yeah, they could do that. Like what happened to me today? Why? The, oh yeah, group Angel group. had a funny thing happen. Yeah, they put the paperback for. For the first book in the series on, on the product page for uh, my new book, so I had right. to email them and oh, yeah, that was a mess. Yeah, yeah trying to but sell paperbacks that already, don't exist. So, thank goodness. <laughs> but yeah, I know what Jeff means with the sign, the all and powerful sign. So well, now you know, we live or die. So now we yes. know Epic Mayhem is out there. Everyone needs to go get it. I'm telling you right now and. Yes, I could be blamed for being biased because I'm in it. Angel's in it. Dungeon Dan's in it. I that was does in not, it. Well, <laughs> I got any, killed really well. Trust me, guys. You want to be part of this universe. It is something mm -hmm. to behold. He has shown a level of imagination <clears throat> that is just unreal. Like, th just coming up with these crazy ideas. He throws stuff at us like, hey, what do y'all think I could do with some mannequins and some baby dolls? What the right. fuck? It's like, okay, he's officially cracked. And then all of a sudden he starts putting it all together. Then the batch drops and you're going. Yeah, you're like, holy oh, like, shit. Oh, wow. So, I remember reading that batch too. I'm like, fucking baby dolls. What is he doing? It was awesome though. Arms pinwheeling, heads getting decapitated. Oh, it was freaking just great. But that's well, going to bring us. Since, uh, no, go ahead. Well, no, I mean, that's just yeah, bouncing, bouncing my ideas off you knuckleheads. <laughs> really? Just, Bad part is we never raise our hands to catch either. It just no. hits us and Don't. drops to the floor. Yeah, there's just serious teabagging going on, but um, <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> it was great. I wasn't expecting it. Nope. Anyway, you were saying, Jack. Um, 
we are not getting off this show today, even though we're down to the last 10 minutes of it, without also bringing up Fall, which is, again, another huge leap away from Guardians, Scream Bloody Cheerleader, and Epic Mayhem. You literally have four different things that could have been written by four totally different authors because they're four totally different stories. Tell us about Fall. Well, the first place is because I get bored easily. I like so, that you have different subjects, you know? I mean, I love zombies, but even I get to a point where I'm like, I got to take a break. Well, you know, zombies are awesome. Uh, I mean, okay. Zombies yep. are a lot yep. of fun. But, <laughs> Jack, after a while, you. after a while, it becomes, okay, how many different ways can you describe somebody's Just, head exploding? Right. You need to walk away from it. Mm-hmm. So I, I've always had eclectic taste, so I write different books. So this this pressure series was it because you just watched a doco on Yellowstone, or or was it something um, else that keyed it, and then you're like just kind of grew it a bit? Yeah, I mean that actually that was one of the four books that uh, the first four books I wrote. I wrote the entire saga out uh, from beginning to end, but I wrote it first person. Okay. And it's kind of like a combination um, action adventure, uh, history lesson, and social commentary because it involves. You know, the breakdown of American society after the Yellowstone Super Volcano ends mm-hmm. life as everybody knows it. I mean, let's face it, when that thing finally blows. And it probably will. But, yeah, but probably not in our lifetime, yeah. thank God. Hopefully not in our God. lifetime. Hopefully not. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, the science would say no. But forget the science. We're talking fiction here. <laughs> Damn right. Right, um, right. When that thing finally blows, the world's fucked. It is. And given that it's in the middle of America, American society will tear itself apart. All you got to do is look at you know, recent events in the last five, ten years. Very uh, true. Which is why... Mm-hmm. It's taken me so long to write the third book. Trying to get all that pieced together. Well, I've got it all pieced together, but the third book is when the shit really starts to fall apart. And it's just a little bit too much like reality. Hmm. And, you know, I write for the same reason I read, to avoid reality. Right. Mm-hmm. That yeah. that's the that, that that's the that's the big thing right there. That's yeah. the that's what all, that's what it's all about. Getting away from from because reality sucks. That's put it out. We all know. Well, now on the opposite tip of that, though, I'm kind of the one that can go either way on it. In that, if I'm reading a book and there's like real life events happening that are very reminiscent of what I'm reading, it's kind of okay because it's relatable. It's like I could be like, yeah, I know what the hell. I could side eye stuff like, yeah, I know what that's all about. Oh, damn it. Well, you yeah, know? and there are quite a few people who do that. However, we're also living in an extremely polarized society. Yes, we are, unfortunately. So now, just just to make it official, I am a registered independent. And I have been since the 90s. And I consider myself a centrist, which means I think they all suck. Right. And, they, and they do. You're not wrong about that. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. But the thing is, the way, the way the U.S. is now, if I say something that's to the left of the extreme right, all of a sudden, and I swear to God, I've been accused of this. I'm told that I am a liberal 
foot soldier. Because I'm not as fucking crazy as the people on the right. Well, by the same token, if I call out, you know, the cancel culture, right. all of a sudden I'm a right wing nut. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. There's, there's no middle ground. And nope. unfortunately, yeah. If you're gonna tell a story like this, you have to account for all sides. If you're gonna be honest, if you're gonna be intellectually honest, you're not you're never gonna find a group of people that are one thing. Or if you do they're gonna be a fucked up group. It's gonna be a cult. Yeah, you can. You have. Basically. You have a group of hardcore um, survivalists. Well, they have a certain mindset. They're all gonna have that same mindset. And to me, yeah, heaven's gate. Exactly. Yeah. To me, if you're reading, if I'm reading something. And everybody's the same. It pours the shit out of me. Right. You gotta have variety. You gotta have different characters who believe different things. You gotta piss off everybody. Well, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Right. You gotta that's, piss someone off. You piss off everyone. That, there you go. It. The way the way that it's been, I couldn't write the third book without pissing everybody off. I finally just decided, fuck them. I'm yeah. going to do it anyway. <laughs> so that'll be coming out this spring. Finally. Can't wait to get our hands on that. Yep. Yes, sir. Well, we are closing in. We are now in the final three minutes of today's show. So I like to spend a little time going around, finding out what everybody's got going on, what they got coming out, where they can be found. So... Since Richard Ryan Rose and Jennifer Amato are not here, I will tell you you can find them both on Amazon. Wild Eyed Southern Boys Book 3 is due out damn near any minute now. It's called Cold Dead War and might feature a certain somebody causing havoc. Just saying. And Jennifer Amato's uh, group series, she is currently working on Stacy. And she is, uh, I think, nearing the halfway point on that. So be sure to go pick out, pick up. The group, Jenna. book one, Jana, get that. Love and that it. is actually, that is based on a real person over in the UK, by the way, which is super freaking cool. Mm-hmm. With that, I am working on getting my little short story edited. Me and, me and Richard, my friendly Bigfoot pal, are currently working on it. And it should be done within the next couple of weeks and put out there for you guys to make fun of and poke with sticks and ridicule. But it will be there. With that said, Angel Ramon, my brother. Where could everybody find you? On Amazon, Angel Ramon. You can find my zombie novels there. Or if you prefer my historical fiction mid RPG stuff, it's Angelus Maximus. And just to show you, this is one of my books that I wait. Wonderful series, according to Jack and others. Oh, yes. You can join me on my Patreon page for Angelus Maximus. There you can, you can read all my stuff well in advance before everyone else. And you can ask this to, to artwork before everyone else. And finally, you can see me. You can find me on the Legion of Adventures Maximus, which uh, three of you are already in. So, and uh, and uh, every other Saturday, we do the Adventures Maximus podcast, where we discuss history and other cool stuff. It's the and one place it, now, it, my friends. That and that show is the one place you can see me dressed as a centurion soldier. So you, you want to see all this sexy with yeah, a cool so helmet? It, it, it's the one place you can see Jack and drag. See, thank you, Jeff. I didn't have to be the one to bring it up this time. I hate you guys. <laughs> I, I really so, don't want to know what you wear under that skirt, Jack. It's, yeah, it's, 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 I don't want to know. know. It, it's <clears throat> basically a nightgown. It's, uh, just it's, the, it's, <laughs> it's the gold thong. A toga, Winnie. It's, it's the gold thong. Uh, yeah. It is. Shoestring up the butt, nightgown. I have on. nightmares I'm, tonight. Yeah, mm-hmm. Good to go. All right. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So now, Dungeon Dan. You are supposed to be working on some special projects. How are those coming along? They are coming along. I'm doing a short story for... Am I allowed to say this, Jeff? Yeah, go for it. Uh, Short story that takes place in the epic mayhem world. 
I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about the other one yet, but yeah, I'm mm-hmm, not yet. gonna I'm gonna actually uh put pen to paper or finger to keyboard. Trust me, um, man, the moment you do, it's a wrap. By you the way, will... Jack, mm-hmm. uh the, the guy who wrote he was nothing just as it out my smell my hog balls, that's the that, Edwards. Oh uh, I yeah. As soon as I saw hog balls, I knew exactly that was <laughs> who else could it be? Right. Give him <laughs> well, either way, I've noticed that uh, writing a movie review and writing a story is a vastly different thing. <laughs> it absolutely, oh, absolutely is. Yeah. But you can find me on the Real Nine uh, horror website, not website, Facebook page. Um, and you can always find me in the padded room with these assholes. <laughs> and here once in a while. Jack froze. I'm like, he's over criticizing me. He's just froze. Yeah, right. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do a clip of that one. I can't decide whether he's got a superior look on his face or a look of drooling idiocy. <laughs> I'm going for part two there, drooling okay. idiocy. Okay, excellent. Oh, he's back. I am back again. It's well, Jeff's turn. Jeffy, where can everybody find you? You can find me on the Great and Powerful Zon. Make sure you spell my last name correctly. D H O M S O N. I do not spit when I say my name. No P. No P. No P. Um, you can also find me on The Asylum of Fear, another one of G. Cooper's written universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find me an hour from now in the padded room. Yes. Thorazine. Mm-hmm. Woohoo. <laughs> yes. Massive injections of Thorazine. And the shipment we- has arrived. And we have a special guest co-host today, I do believe. Damien Lee. Damien Lee and oh, Scott shit. Baker. Gotta get and my Scott shades. Baker. And Scott oh, Baker. that should get be fun. Your, get your sunglasses out, boys yeah, and girls. You can, you can see Scott Baker and myself every other Monday on Battle Touches History. I like that show. Especially I do the too. Amelia Earhart one. That was so cool. We have fun with it. We have fun with it. And, uh, Okay, let me think. The audio version of Full Metal Zombie should be out in a week or so. Yay! Um, Matt will be starting work on Senseless Slaughter February 1st. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. Me too. I feel like a kid at Christmas. I'm looking forward to it. It's, It's pretty funny. He, he, Pretty he, funny. He, it's he, fucking he, hilarious. It's, well, yeah. He did his usual Matt Crow job. So awesome. We got to get him on one of these shows. No, <laughs> no. No. I keep him busy uh, narrating my books. Exactly. You're trying to distract the man. What do we, in uh, fact, what, do, what are we even doing right now? Jeff, Angel, <laughs> y'all should be writing right now. What the hell are we doing here? Dude, I already gave you 2,000 words this morning. Yeah, hey, you do. You're, you're editing, man. You're editing that monster. Yeah, yeah. Well, Angel would have gave me like five thousand. So, meh. Ooh, fighting words. Bobby. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I had a frog on my chest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, thank you everyone Stop for this tuning madness. in. Stop the madness. For Angel Ramon. For Dungeon Dan U Bell. Thank you for uh, popping in, helping us out this week with uh, Richard and Jen being. Not available. And for my hero, my friend, my big guy, Jeff Thompson, Mm -hmm. this has been the Written Undead Podcast. I am Jack Childress, and we will see you next week with Chris freaking Philbrook. Oh. Uh, Hey, hey. We'll see you then. Leave a review. Always leave a review. Always, always. Leave reviews. Definitely. Well, guys, peace out. We'll see you on the padded room. Everybody get your butts ready to be over there. All of you. Every one of you. Go join the Asylum of Fear. I'm not playing. With that, we are out.